we'll just run through this one then. Um, I will share my screen. Um, okay, so this was the control flow um, chapter where um, it, as we just said, is quite uh, short compared to some of the others. So it essentially goes through um, some choices. So we've got kind of if switch statements, if else, um, so base if else, and then dplyr version, and then a case when. Um, and then there's kind of goes through for loops and briefly mentions while and repeat. So firstly, the choices. So we've got the if statement um, and then the if and else. And um, so these, were, I think, are pretty straightforward. So it's just if a condition evaluates to true, then um, the result is the true action. Um, so we can have this without an else, or we can have it with an else. And if we've got the else, then we get something returned if the condition is false. And we can have it um, looking like this, or we can use brackets if we need um, a, a compound expression. So if they're a bit longer than just some really short expression. And then we can also add in else ifs um, and have any number of those. Um, so some of these were just slides that other people had done, and then I've added some bits which haven't submitted to the repository yet. Um, I think this is part of the, the first exercise. So um, I was just saying, why does this work? So we've got x is a vector of 1 to 10, and then it was just saying if length x then return not empty, otherwise return empty, and essentially length x evaluates to true because um, length of x is not zero. Um, so anything that's not zero then uh, gets coerced to a true value. Can I, um, sorry, interject there? So yeah. if you did... Uh, let's say x was an empty vector mm -hmm. and length was zero. Oh, I guess because zero evaluates is false. Never mind. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Got it. Um, so yeah, I guess that's uh, yeah, that'd be this one. So this is kind of a zero length vector, just an empty vector. So the length of that's going to be zero, um, which will evaluate to false. Um, and then this is just saying, so if then returns a value, so you can assign that value, um, just as with, with anything else. And then there's a note here saying that the book recommends assigning the results of an if statement only when the entire expression fits on one line. Otherwise, it just gets a bit messy. Um, then this I quite liked because I hadn't really used this before. Um, so, uh, this is just using if without an else statement. And, um, so it, if you do that and the condition is false, it will return a null. And then, uh, you've got certain functions like the C and paste function that just drop the null inputs. So you can um, have this kind of quite nice way of, um, of creating uh, statements. Uh, so this was the example from the book where you're just, you can have this greet function and you can have the name. And then if you say true, then it will add on the happy birthday. Um, 
so this was just my example because I then used that and some code in a little shiny app that I was uh, doing that just needed to make some text formatted but um, I'm not sure it was really any more concise than what I had before but it was kind of satisfying that it can just drop this uh, null statement so um, that was quite nice I thought um, then we've got kind of the notion of invalid uh, inputs so for an if statement then the conditions got to evaluate to a single true or false uh, value um, if we pass it just a number so like where we had the length of the vector um, before okay. um, here we've got 56 then um, that single number gets coerced to a logical type and essentially anything that isn't zero becomes true. Um, so we get the value returned. Um, so it works with uh, decimal places as well. But if we pass it as zero, then that just evaluates to false. Um, but most other, or various other things then don't get or can't get coerced to um, true or false. So then uh, we get errors. So if we just pass it a piece of text, um, then we get an error saying that it can't be coerced essentially. Unless the piece of text is true, um, in which case that does get converted to true. Um, then just other examples of when it fails. So uh, an empty numeric vector um, is a blank zero, null as well, and an ace as well. Then I left this bit in as well, which is in the book and was in the notes saying that the exception is when you have a logical vector where the length is greater than one. So if you had if, C true and false, then you would only get a warning um, unless you'd set this. But I think since R4.2, um, then um, that's changed anyway. So um, this has been set to default. So you will get an error um, anyway if you try and try and do this. So we don't need to worry about setting this unless we've got a really old version of R that we have to work with. So that was if, which just had to evaluate to a single um, value. And then we've got if else, which is a vectorized version of if. Um, so in this case, we've got a vector of values that are 1 to 10. And if we pass that to if else um, and check whether it's divisible by 5, then we can have a value that's returned if that's true, and then a value that's returned if it's false. Um, so here, when it's divisible by five, we get the xxx, and then that for 10 as well. And then this is just the same, but by dividing by two, so we've got odd and even um, values. So this is the base R version of of if else, which allows you to um, provide different types of uh, values for the true and the false. So down here, um, we've got, as an example, where it returns A if it's true and three if it's false. So it lets you do that. Whereas the dplyr version, which is if underscore else um, is much, stricter about this and you have to provide the same type um, of value for the true and the false um, values. Uh, so I'm not sure if there's any ever any reason to use the base 
if else, um, we just stick with deep flow. And then we've got the switch statement. So um, this is so that we don't have to have a load of if condition, else if, another condition, else if, else if, etc. cetera. Um, we can have a kind of more concise way of uh, doing this by using switch. So um, we can just have our kind of input to switch and then um, whatever that equates to, then we return the value on the right. Um, so I think this was actually, this was the example from the help page for, for switch where it's just finding the different uh, types of averages. Um, and then it just mentions that the last component should always throw an error. Otherwise um, we might get, or it will invisibly return nulls. And there's also a recommendation to just use character inputs, I think, because the uh, numeric ones, if you've got various uh, decimal places, it can fail in strange ways or something. I didn't really investigate exactly um, how it fails in strange ways, but. We go. Um, so this is just an example of using um, that switch function. So this is well switch inside um, a function called center, uh, which somebody had nicely done a um, a kind of more extensive example of this, where they're plotting out these different uh, averages. Uh, but there's also just a simpler version of this here where we're just um, passing it the mean, median or trimmed. So it can just switch between these three different things. Um, but yeah, there's a nice example with a plot there. Um, then we've got an example uh, from the book where it just shows how you can fall through to the next value. So um, in the switch function, if you just say, or oh, cow equals, and then you've just got um, blank uh, after the equals sign, then it's just gonna fall through to the next option. And in this case, that's just gonna fall through again. So any of these cow, horse, and dog will just return with four. Um, and then we've got this default or error um, at the end. Then we've got a uh, case when, so this is um, from dplyr and um, it's kind of a bit like switch uh, where you can have kind of multiple values, which sort of like if else, but with more values uh, or more options. So again, this one's using the, um, the mean, median, and trimmed average example. So this starts off with a data frame with mean, median, and trimmed, and then is using that. So passing those values. I know it's creating the value, um, but it's passing, saying if that value equals is equal to mean, then we return the mean of x, which is this um, random set of numbers. Um, if it's median, then you return the median of it, et cetera. So case wins is just quite a nice way of having lots of um, options in there as well. And then uh, we can set a default uh, return value if we get down to there. So that's just the result of that one. So that was pretty much it for the choices section there. I don't I don't think there's anything in there that was too um too complex. Um and then we've got loops. So the main part of this was um a for loop. Uh so kind of just 
and that goes through these, so four loops for iterating over elements of a vector. So the syntax being four, and then for item in vector, do something. So in this case, we're um, saying four i in one to five. So then i takes the value of one to start with, uh, does whatever is inside um, the expression, and then goes to the next value. So we get that result here. Uh, and then we can use the next and the break um, keywords, yes. Um, so next, we'll just skip the rest of the iteration and break, then exits it. So this is cool. this is just an example using both of those. So we're just iterating through the numbers one to 10. Um, and then we've got an if statement in here. So if it's less than three, then we go we kind of skip out the rest of these lines um, and go up to the next number. So I'll be two. Um, so that means we'll skip it again when I is three. Then um, once I is three, then we'll print it out. Then we go through again until I is greater than or equal to five. And then we break, which means we finish it completely. So the results we get printed out are three, four, and five. Uh, then this has got uh, one of the exercises in there. So uh, it's saying, what can we say about this vector that is being iterated over here? So we've got an initial vector that just contains three uh, values, one, two, and three. And so we're iterating through those three values. To, so to start with x, is going to be one because it'll be the first value. And then um, we've got XS being assigned again. So we've got it outside of the loop and then we've got it inside of the loop, um, which kind of gets a little bit confusing. Uh, but then what happens here is we have C, so it's combining the um, XS values and then X times two, which to start with is gonna be two. Um, and then it's gonna do that again um, and keep going through those three values. So this is the output. So I think essentially what this is saying is that this X in XS only goes through these three original values. It doesn't um, then go through the kind of compound version that's been built up each time. So it kind of resets each time you go through the through the loop. Right. Somehow. So we don't go through X. It does do it. Yeah, does it three times, but you're not, it's not adding the original vector each time. I don't know. It made sense when I read it through. I'm not so sure. It does so much now, but. Sorry, I think I, I drifted for a bit because I was in my own head. Uh, you are you don't understand why it doesn't add the same the vector every time? Is that what you're saying? Uh, like it, the whole thing? It, so it does. <laughs> yes. Well, that, okay, yeah. So the final version that we show is just the three, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it 
the xs vector is kind of being built up it just adds yeah it adds that what it adds the new value onto it but the x here that only comes from this original excess value it otherwise it would just be a continuous loop an infinite loop um so yeah excess right. gets longer but only we only go through it it only loops through three times right Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there were some, I think there were kind of three pitfalls that were highlighted. So um, saying that output containers should be pre-allocated to size, otherwise it just gets super slow if people are um, adding things on uh, when they've got kind of millions of iterations. Um, also, if you're iterating through and saying one to length of something, if something has length zero, then it kind of goes backwards. So you can go one to zero, um, which just can be a bit, a bit weird. Uh, so you can use seek along instead. And then um, there's this last bit, I think is basically referring to these, uh, this date example. So um, it kind of, the for loop can strip some, some attributes. So I don't know, I haven't really worked with date. I don't have to work with dates, but um, which I'm quite uh, glad about, but um, in this example, when you're iterating through it, then it removes the date attribute and just get those um, numbers. Um, but apparently, if you use seek along instead, uh, no, it's got nothing to do with seek along, has it? It's um, it's using the double square brackets to extract that, and then it retains those attributes. So, um, yeah. Um, and then this was the uh, last bit. So just a kind of brief mention of while and repeat. Uh, so the while loop just keeps going while the condition is true. Um, then you uh, evaluate the expression and repeat will just keep going. Um, until it encounters a break. And for loops can be rewritten as whiles and whiles can be rewritten as repeats. Um, but that only goes in one direction. And essentially you should use for um, and shouldn't really use the others, but you also shouldn't even need to use for because there are other um, options available that are less flexible and so just more strict. So you don't do anything nasty with for loops, I think. Um, but there's just an example of a super simple um, for loop where we're just printing out five values and then doing the same thing with while. So with while we've just got a condition. Um, so once, so I starts off as one, so then it gets printed out then we increment that. So then once it gets to five, then that while loop just stops. And then repeat um, is kind of similar, but we don't even have a condition. We just do something, but then we need a break statement in there so that we don't have an infinite loop. And I think that was, that was it for this one. So I don't, now, if there's anything else anyone found in there um, that wanted to um, 
go through at all. Okay, I, I have difficulties with this uh, for loops. Okay, mm -hmm. so some, sometimes they work, sometimes they not. So I still don't get it where I do wrong when they do not work. Um, so for example, uh, if I do this for uh, one to five, okay, and then imagine that I want to create a vector which does the sum, okay, of um, one plus the value of uh, i, okay? And so, like, I have four, uh, like here, just in the, um, in the example, in the notes, no? okay? You have this um, four, it goes from i, then that has a, a, um, an element, so a counter index i that goes from one to five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I like, for example, to build up a, a new vector named x, which will be equal to i plus one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I like to have to, to type x and have the result of the the vector and see the vector how is it important. two types okay so like instead of print one to i okay i have uh instead of print one uh to i So, well, yeah, that would be numeric, yeah. I don't. Yeah, length five. Okay. Okay, and so that that would be a question to me. Okay. So then you type X and you have, okay. Is, is that what? Yeah, yeah, this is what I wanted. But is this because you assign it to be a numeric uh, vector? So you define the vector uh, beforehand? Yeah, I don't know that you need to, though, do you? Um, I know. I'm, I know it says to do it, so that it's not slow, know. but um, they, do, they do not work. Oh them. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if it's not, if X hasn't been defined at all, then it's uh, not happy. But I think okay. you, so. Um. So if x is null, then it will work because null is something. But I guess it's just a lot slower if you're doing loads of iterations. Okay. And this is going to be just uh, as the same with a data frame instead of just a one vector. Sorry? So the procedure is just the same in case of a data frame instead of a, just a vector. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. now now we have, uh, uh, if, in the case we build, we, we provide a data frame and we like to add a vector to, a, to this data frame. Like okay. imagine, yeah, so that, that's exactly the same. Uh, I need yeah. to define the frame. So if we were design. making it as a, I mean, I, I guess, frame, do you have to, do you have to give it anything? 
Um, don't think that would work. Um, so if we had data frame, so just But I don't know that, so yeah. the column would have to be yeah. defined first. I mean, I think we can change X. We could change X because that already exists. Okay. Okay. Do but if the column doesn't exist, I don't think we could do that, can we? Oh yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So as long okay. as the data frame's been, the data frame needs to be present with the right number of rows, I guess. Okay. So this is just a matter of defining the empty shell uh, beforehand. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So if I don't do that, it won't work. So when, yeah, if if we didn't have the value defined at all, then it didn't work. And I guess yeah, it worked even if it was null. But it's yeah, okay. just better practice to have it as the right length if possible, because then it's going to be a lot faster. Okay. Yeah. So I got into a loop. Okay, because when you if you keep if you don't define it or uh, maybe I think I, I messed it up like I define it once, then don't don't define it and then the the, the vector, the defined vector was still in my environment. So I rerun the loop. So I think it worked because it was still in the environment. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so now I, uh, oh, next time I, <laughs> I need it. I'll try to see if I can make it work. Thank you. Cool, so. Anything else anyone wanted to talk about loops and choices or? Yeah, I have more questions. Like, okay. so can, can you explain the difference between, um, okay, we also have uh, while. Mm -hmm. uh, and switch, I think, uh, not switch. Yeah, so we have while and so, when I use why, what is the difference? Why I should use while? But it's, I'm not sure you should ever use while, um, unless there's something that, um, any particular reason. Um, so the difference being that it is just keeps going, um, for a condition while a condition is true. So for loop has a finite number of iterations. So in this case, it would just run five times, whatever you are doing um, within the loop. Um, while will keep going while a condition is true. Um, so it's a lot easier to kind of create infinite loops. 
So if you just, if we just had on this, I is one, and then while I is less than five, print out I, then I just get okay. this infinite loop going. Um, so we just, in this case, if we increment I, then um, then we'll only get it five times, and then it will stop once that condition is no longer true. Mm -hmm. Um. What 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 was the other one? The other one's repeat, which oh, really? I've, ne I've never used. Um. But that, I guess, is, yeah, there's no condition for this. It's just saying repeat this action until you get to a, until there's a break statement. Um, so then exit out of it. So I, yeah. I don't know when, when repeat would uh, ever really be necessary. And I think there's so many, um, other functions as well like the, there's the apply ones and then there's map and there's all the per stuff so um yeah i don't i don't know if there's ever any need for a repeat and okay so you mean inside the functions they use yeah i mean i guess they yeah maybe um I think it's it's even quite rare that you actually need a for loop as well because there's other stricter ways of writing that kind of code. Uh -huh. So it's kind of good to know that they exist. But... Yeah. yeah, especially if you uh, like to make a function. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? We call it a day. Yeah, I think we're good. I was kind of playing around over here because I was trying to figure out. I was trying to make sure I understood the difference between, like, iterating, iterating directly, or using the sequence along. And I think I got it. <laughs> Basically, I don't know if you guys get, if you're if you're clear on that. Uh, but I, I struggled a little bit with that. But basically, it's just the, like when you sequence along directly, like if you have a character vector, let's say, and you say for name in list of names, right? Like if you print the name, you get the actual what's in. What am I trying? You get the name, the text. Whereas if you sequence along, what you're getting is an index. You're not getting the actual name. Does that make sense? So you have to then index the. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I can put like my little, what I did yeah, here to so put around. So if you do... Yeah. So here's what I did. Cause I was trying to figure this out. I was like, cause there is a difference. It's not exactly the same, you know? Yeah. Okay. If you, if you run those, you'll see like the first for loop prints the names. The second one, though, like if you just print I, you're just printing the index one through five or one through three in this case. Sorry, one through three. And then the third one, though, prints the name. The first one and the third one print the same. Does that make sense? 
Um, I, I guess yeah. I'm yeah, so the, the eyes are all, they're the index in both of yeah. them. That's all right. When you do sequence along, yeah. you're getting an index. You're not getting yeah. the actual value that's in the in that you know place. You're getting the index of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then when it, I think it's saying to use it is instead of yeah, it was being saying, one to length of something because right. a zero value or right something. Whereas at least, yeah. So that makes sense, but you just have to remember that you're not returning the value; you're returning the index. So you have to then, you yeah. Know what I'm saying that's what I was yeah. trying to figure out if I understood that right. Um, I'm gonna be honest; I'm still a little uh, unsure of. Like I'm looking at the examples in the book for switch, I think is a little easier to understand than the than the notes. Yeah, uh, more basic examples, and I'm but and I don't see case when in the book, which is interesting. But I use case when all the time. So is there like is there a difference yeah. between when you? Can you go over that again real quick? If you said it, I missed it. Like why you would use switch versus case when? Um, so case when is in the book. Oh, it is? Where did I? Yeah, use? just before switch. Like Oh, before just, switch. Just above it. Oh, um, got it. Sorry. So I don't know that. I mean, switch is base R and case when's deep mm -hmm. line. So... Um, I hmm. don't know that you would need to use switch um, yeah. instead unless hmm. you just were not wanting to use any packages. Yeah. Um, but type but they're pretty yeah, similar. In switch type, what type? I define a function center. So with X and type, then I switch type. So type, what what is type in this case? That's why I didn't like the notes because honestly, the one in the the one in the yeah one, uh, it just it has just function of X. That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I did. I thought I'd go. With, I didn't want to delete the stuff that there was already yeah. in the notes, but it yeah, was yeah. already more complicated. So I yeah. I put in the slightly simpler um version yeah. um without removing it. Um but uh yeah, so the well the book one is then Yeah, uh, I can paste it uh, in if you want. Yeah, I I've got it. Um so So, like that to me is a lot easier to understand than the other specific use case. But I also don't quite understand. Like he says, you should always put the stop. Uh, you know, at the end. What do you, um? What does he say? Yeah. Because it returns a null. Otherwise, I think it said here. Last yeah. component should always throw an error. Otherwise, unmatched inputs will invisibly return null. But if it returns a null, is that going to just, is it going to be like having an NA in your data or is it like going to not show up at all and then your vector gets shorter? Like, I don't get, you know what I'm saying? Um, what, happens yeah. if you, what happens if you don't put that and you get a null, <laughs> you know? Up. So, so x option a is option one right b would be two and then right. so d 
is just then right but, let's, but yeah so if you have you assigned that to yeah put like i don't know a and d both in there but assign it to something so you can see the the vector that you get out of it you know what i'm saying i think you're missing, missing part, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, doesn't like that. So we can have yeah. a good loop, I guess. Um, Okay. I guess it depends how you're using it. So you, yeah, so you would get a null in that spot. So your vector, your output vector will still be the same length. So, I mean, I would think sometimes you might want to have a null if it's, you know. Um. Yeah, I, I guess it kind of depends what what yeah. you're doing and if you then get a null value in your code if it then breaks something else further down because in your switch statement you should always have one of those um options i guess wait. so wait say that again what well if if in your code you would expect to always have one of these three right. to match right. one of those three, then right. you want it to throw an error if you don't, because maybe there's something that you need to yeah. address in the input. Yeah. But I guess if you're seems... if you're happy to get a null, then right, it just seems like it depends <laughs> on the use case. Like sometimes yeah. you just wanted to put a null there, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Um. <laughs> Huh. but actually what i figured out in looking at this example too though is that i didn't realize that switch is like if that you can only put a single value in there it's not vectorized so All that's right, good. So in the that's good the, is the single yeah, when you tried to put in a vector, it said no. Nope. Like, yeah, so it's only Very... for single values. Yeah. Case one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, yeah, case one is vectorized. Yeah. I do not know how to resize this. It doesn't want to move. Um. Oh. <laughs> that's really weird. Weird. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, yeah, there we go. So that's what I then ended up doing. Yeah. The yeah, switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I missed. Okay, cool. Bye. Right. Sorry to take up more time. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much.